The death of the lumbering industry in the late 1800s helped to bring about the birth of the sugar beet industry into the Saginaw Valley's farming and food processing economies. After loggers had cleared the pine forests in the area, the land was virtually unusable due to the massive expanse of tree stumps left behind. State and local leaders were searching for a substitute for the jobs and money generated by a now departed lumber baron. A solution was needed that could be replenished each year, bringing a stabilizing influence on the economic base of the region. Enter the sugar beet. In 1839, Lucius Lyon, a skilled potato grower, decided he could transfer his talents to the planting of the sugar beet. His growing project was successful, but the manufacturing system was not. Interest in the sugar beet was not revived until 1884, when Joseph Seaman, a Saginaw printer, happened to see how well the sugar beet was doing for the people in a region of Germany that he had visited. Another trip convinced him to send a sample of the seeds to his partner, who forwarded them to Dr. Robert C. Kedzie, the professor of chemistry at the Michigan State Agricultural College, now called Michigan State University. Dr. Kedzie's enthusiasm for the bee's potential in the region earned him the title of father of the Michigan bee sugar industry. He imported 1,500 pounds of seeds from France and distributed them to farmers across Michigan. The success of the planting helped encourage people to clear the stumps and better utilize the once again valuable acreage. Funds were raised by boiler manufacturer Harry T. Wicks, Thomas A. Harvey, and grain merchant George B. Morley to underwrite the bee growing tests. Invitations to farmers for seed and instructions were issued. This resulted in bringing the samples of beets from 600 farms to Dr. Kedzie's lab. Three crops of beets, he said, grown in three successive years are worth as much as one crop of pine trees, which required 100 years to mature. Suddenly the switch from trees to beets brought the stump lanes back into productivity. In 1897, the Michigan legislature passed a bill offering the beet processors a bounty of one cent per pound of sugar produced in Michigan from Michigan-grown sugar beets, provided that the farmers received at least four dollars per ton for beets of 12 percent sugar. The Businessmen's Committee settled on Bay City as the locale for Michigan's Pioneer Factory. As a result, the Pioneer Michigan Sugar Company was organized, and on December 9, 1897, the stock subscription list was closed and some subscriptions even had to be returned. The factory was built in the Bay City suburb of Essexville. On October 17, 1898, a smiling governor, Hazen B. Pingree, was on hand to officially begin the state's first beet sugar campaign. The first processing season in the state's history was, by every account, a very remarkable success. Farmers have harvested an average of 10.3 tons of beets from each of 3,103 acres total of 32,047 tons of sugar beets. The farmers were paid an average of $4.51 per ton of beets, an amount that immediately classified sugar beets as a premier cash crop. The investors were delighted. No crop in human history had held the potential for creating such a high return from so few acres. A farmer with above average ability who placed 15 acres in sugar beets could earn $900. If his family provided the bulk of the labor, then that profit would more than take care of the family's needs for a year. After adding the revenue from the crops and rotations such as wheat, corn, and beans, as well as revenues from milk, eggs, and poultry, the farm family's standards of living advanced from a subsistence level to one that compared favorably to those who held mid-management positions in industry. Sugar beets established their reputation as a mortgage payer. Official recognition by the U.S. Department of Agriculture in 1898 of the importance of the sugar beet industry combined with the success of the Essexville plant sparked rapid development. One year earlier, the nation had only 10 beet sugar factories. The construction of seven sugar beet factories in 1898 developed into a boom by 1900, when the nationwide count started 30 beet sugar factories in 11 states. In 1899, eight factories followed Essexville's successful experiment in Michigan. The new factories were in Holland, Kalamazoo, Rochester, Benton Harbor, Alma, West Bay City, Cairo, and a second factory in Essexville. Despite the lack of factory builders and the engineers to operate them, 14 additional factories rose in the outskirts of Michigan towns from Marine City to Charlotte during the next six years. The Bay City factory built in 1901 and named the German American Sugar Company, which later evolved into Monitor Sugar Company, was the fourth in the city, giving it more beet sugar factories than any city in America. In 1905, the Michigan beet sugar manufacturing industry began to encounter difficult times. 
Seven factories had closed in Essexville, Kalamazoo, Rochester, Benton Harbor, Marine City, Saginaw, and East Towers. Most often because farmers turned indifferent to the appeals of factory representatives to grow beans. Sixteen beet factories with a combined daily slice capacity of nearly 11,000 tons remained in business, however. More sugar beet companies would have gone under had not H.O. Havenmeyer's powerful and experienced American Sugar Refining Company stepped in and provided a helping hand. American Sugar, sensing the profit possibilities of the Michigan beet sugar industry, bought a substantial stock interest in many of the local companies and gave them the benefit of technical and financial assistance they so badly needed. In 1906, Havemeyer promoted the idea of merging six of the local companies in which his firm had stock interest into one single company. This was achieved when Alma Sugar Company, Peninsula Sugar Refining Company of Cairo, Pioneer Michigan Sugar Company of Bay City, Seabuing Sugar Company, Sanilac Sugar Refining Company of Croswell, and Saginaw Valley Sugar Company of Carleton were merged and formed Michigan Sugar Company on August 20th, 1906. In 1924, Michigan Sugar added two additional factories to its corporate roster when beet sugar factories in Owasso and Lansing joined the company. 24 years later, in 1948, Michigan Sugar acquired the Mount Pleasant factory. With the closing in 1954 of three factories in Menominee, Blissfield, and St. Louis, only two of the original 24 companies remained. One was Michigan Sugar Company that was then operating four of the nine factories that it had acquired in Carroll, Carleton, Croswell, and Seabuing. The other was Monitor Sugar Company's single factory in Bay City, which, from the late 1960s to the early 1980s, was under the leadership of Charles Coriel, whose family held controlling interest in the company. In 1961, an opportunity presented itself to Albert Flegenheimer to become a majority shareholder in Michigan Sugar Company as the Pitt Cairn Company was looking to sell its stock interest in the company. Later that year, his son Ernest joined his father and was subsequently elected to the board of directors. By 1962, Ernest was second vice president of Michigan Sugar Company. The following year, Albert stepped into the role of chairman of the board of directors while Ernest was elected president and treasurer. The Flegenheimers not only wanted to lead Michigan Sugar Company, they wanted to improve it. This included attending hearings on legislative matters pertaining to the sugar industry and inspecting other sugar beet fields and factories, not only in the U.S., but as far away as Belgium. From these research expeditions, they developed more efficient ways to run the factories. Starting in the mid-1980s and continuing for the next 20 years, the two remaining companies were involved in a series of acquisitions and mergers. Monitor Sugar Company was acquired in 1982 by Barlow Rand, Johannesburg, South Africa. In June of 1984, Michigan Sugar Company was acquired by Savannah Foods and Industries of Savannah, Georgia, the second largest company in the sugar industry. In 1985, Michigan Sugar acquired Northern Ohio Sugar Company with a plant in Fremont, Ohio and a distribution facility in Findlay, Ohio. This new wholly owned subsidiary was named Great Lakes Sugar Company. In 1997, Imperial Sugar Company of Sugarland, Texas made a highly leveraged acquisition of Savannah Foods and Industries and its subsidiaries. On January 16, 2001, Imperial Sugar and all of its subsidiaries, unable to pay its massive debt, filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. As part of the bankruptcy restructuring, Michigan Sugar Company's growers were approached by Imperial Sugar offering Michigan Sugar Company for sale. The board of directors of Great Lakes Sugar Bee Growers Association formed a grower-owned cooperative and contracted to purchase Michigan Sugar Company from Imperial Sugar and closed the deal on February 12, 2002. In 2004, Monitor Sugar Company was offered for sale by its parent company, Elovo Sugar Company of Durban, South Africa. The Monitor Sugar Beet Growers Association initially hoped to acquire the companies much in the same manner the Michigan Sugar Growers purchased that company from Imperial Sugar Company two years earlier. However, careful analysis suggested a different route. Monitor's Growers and Michigan Sugar Company joined forces and bought the Bay City factory on October 1, 2004. Now the two companies who for most of the 20th century viewed each other as fierce competitors were one grower-owned cooperative, Michigan Sugar Company. Today, Michigan Sugar Company is the only remaining sugar company in the state. It is the third largest in the U.S. It has nearly 900 grower owners, 980 year-round employees, and 1,100 seasonal workers. It generates more than one half billion dollars in direct economic activity annually in the local communities in which it operates. Its combined factories have a beet slicing capacity of 22,000 tons per day and an ability to produce more than 1.2 billion pounds of sugar each year which it markets under the Pioneer Sugar and Big Chief Sugar brand names. As it was more than a century ago, Michigan Sugar Company is once again locally grown and locally owned.